Sir, it's an emergency. A leak has hit the second T-app. My god, those bastards. Wait, there's a second T-app? Yeah, you heard Jeb right. There was another leak in the T-app saga. That makes it the third leak of this saga, but this one, this one has a twist you cannot resist. And did I make this video because I thought the joke in the intro was funny? <laughs> yes. Maybe. Maybe. Now for those of us who are employed and not chronically online, which it's very few of us in this economy. Let me give you a rundown of the T-App saga up to this point. In the beginning, there was nothing, and it was good. And then in 2023, the T-App came out. It was an app exclusively for women to talk about dating experiences they've had with men. Whether it was a good date, bad date, did they get ghosted? Did the guy talk about his hatred for JavaScript and how it should never be run on the server? You know, the typical conversations on a date. In the app, there were even features allowing you to secretly post a man's dating profile and assign red flags to it, such as ghosting or any other negative aspect. You could then reverse image search that profile and find the man's real identity, even if you hadn't gone on a date with him. And I know some of you are panicking right now, but don't worry, your AI waifus could not post on there. That's because the T-App used a verification process to make sure you were a woman. To be allowed to use the T-App, you had to take a picture of your driver's license or any form of ID proving you are female. And if you see no problem in handing over your ID to a random app, then to you I say I hope you didn't get mugged making it back from your local pub after having your fill of 3 pie, 1 mash, stew deals, and all that covered in throw up. <laughs> But to the rest of us, let me show you who you were handing over all this data to. Before founding the T-App, Sean took a 6 month, 25 hour per week bootcamp. And just like every brave bootcamper, he knew he had to start his own SaaS company and gather as much user data as possible. And there were even some rumors going around that this app was vibe coded. But I might need a little more evidence before I make such disgusting allegations. Luckily, after a little bit, you didn't have to provide your ID anymore. Instead, you could just take a selfie to prove you're a woman and obviously there is no way any of this could go wrong once this app hit first place on the Apple App Store, it caught the attention of frustrated 4chan users who decided to take a closer look at the app's security. And after probably 5 seconds in a quick Google search, they found a huge vulnerability. You know how the T-App collected all of those driver's licenses and selfies for verification? Well, it turns out those were stored in a Firebase bucket that had no security in front of it. That means anyone at any point could access those pictures. And if you're not familiar with Firebase buckets, they're similar to S3 buckets or even Blob storage for Azure, and if you've worked with any of those services, you know that the default setting is to keep everything private. You have to go out of your way to disable the privacy settings. And most of the time, those services beg and plead with you, please, please do not do this. You don't know what you're doing. Please do not disable this setting. But Sean did not listen and all of those pictures got leaked. 4chan quote-unquote hackers created a small script that went through that entire bucket and grabbed 72,000 images, which included 13,000 selfies and government IDs. With that, the leaker set up torrents where anyone could grab those selfies and government IDs. And the internet had a field day. Someone made a website where you could rank women and it even had a leaderboard. But I think even worse, someone created a Google map of everyone's location from the T app. And you might think to yourself, wait, I came in a little bit later. I didn't need to submit my government ID. There's no way they can find me. Well, I've got bad news for you. Turns out, even if you verified yourself with a selfie, your location could still be in jeopardy. That's because whenever you take a picture on your phone, it has a little bit of metadata associated with it. That metadata includes the time the picture was taken and the location the picture was taken. That's why in some photo apps, like on iPhones, you can search and sort based on your photo's location. For very verification processes like the one on the T-app, this metadata is supposed to be removed from the picture before it's uploaded. However, as you can guess, Sean probably didn't even know there was metadata on pictures and the T-app never removed it. And the most ironic part is that the T-app claimed that they deleted those selfies after your verification was done. Obviously, these mistakes were huge and it put the lives of their users in danger. But you know, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has those days. The T-app founder learned from his mistakes and obviously nothing will ever go wrong again. 
turns out the leaks were just getting started because the T app made one of the most rookie mistakes possible, ones that you would probably learn at the very beginning of a bootcamp or your time in college. Some hackers decided to inspect the T app even deeper. They took a look at the app's network traffic and found something really strange. For some reason, there was an API key coming in with requests. Turns out the T-App developers had hard-coded an API key onto the app that gave access to their entire database without authentication. That's right, if you thought putting your API keys into GitHub was bad, picture hard-coding it right into your app. Oh no! Oh no! With that API key, 1.1 million private messages were leaked. These messages contained intimacy conversations, infidelity conversations, phone numbers, meeting locations, pretty much everything. And these weren't just outdated messages. The messages were up to a week before the leak happened. So the TM got majorly breached twice for simple rookie mistakes that should have never happened. Which is even more ironic when the app's motto is helping women date safely. I guess that doesn't include securely. Luckily, this was a learning experience for all of us and we will not make the same mistake thrice trusting random apps luckily nothing will go wrong again again oh no it all went wrong after the popularity and scandals of the t app men took a look and said hey why are women the only ones allowed to leak private and sensitive information about other people we need to do the same exact thing. And that's how the T on her app was formed. The concept was exactly the same as the T app, but in reverse. It's a male only app that lets you publicly share pictures of women that you've dated. And then other men could leave comments about the woman's appearance or experiences they've had with her. So it's pretty much identical to the T app. It even copied some of the T app's app store description. But as you can guess, that's not the only thing they copied. Once the T app hit number two on the app store right behind the t-app it sparked the interest of security researchers not 4chan this time they started by trying to find the domain that the t on her app was hosted on something like a public website or public dns records something that could link it back to apis used by the t on her app but they really couldn't find anything this company was ghost except for one subdomain. When they went to that subdomain, they realized that it was the landing page for the entire T on her apps API, aka the blueprint on how to access data within the app. And on that landing page, they found out there was an admin panel and they also found the login credentials for that admin panel. The creator's full Gmail was exposed and the password, which was password one exclamation point, which is beautiful, let me just say. Now that admin panel says its URL is localhost, which means it's just pointing back to whatever server it's hosted on. And since they really didn't know the server information, they couldn't get direct access to it. Though, if you had the public IP or DNS of that server, you would have clear access using that username and password. And just know, it took these security experts only two minutes to find all this information. But they didn't really need access to this admin panel. All of the information they needed was right in front of them. All of the T on her's endpoints were right there. There, they just needed a way to hit them. Now, those of you who aren't familiar with APIs, you can think of endpoints as a website URL. And when you hit it, the website returns data that you need. But those of you who frequently use APIs are saying, hey, the endpoint isn't enough. It's actually kind of difficult still to hit those endpoints. And what if they have authentication behind those endpoints? Well, luckily, the creator of the T on her app already thought of that. Or most likely didn't think of it. That's because there was an endpoint called docs that you could hit without being authenticated and it would return you the swagger docs of the entire API. If you've never used swagger, it's pretty much a tool that auto generates documentation for your API, giving clear instructions and examples on how someone can hit each one of your endpoints. Now, having the Swagger docs in itself isn't too bad. A lot of companies have clear documentation that lets you have access to their backend. However, the major flaw in the T 
key on her app's API is the fact that they did not require authentication at all, meaning any user could get information about any other user without any checks in place. With all of that information, the researchers were able to get all of the users waiting to get authenticated for the app with one single button press. This information contained the user's profile name, their age, their location, and their private email address. Oh, and it had one more thing. Remember how I talked about the T app's Firebase bucket? Well, the user data from the T on her app had a link to an S3 bucket. S3 is pretty much Amazon's alternative to Google's Firebase bucket. And if you went to that link, it would redirect you to that S3 bucket, which was not private, allowing you to see the driver's license and selfies of users trying to sign up for the T on her app. So the T on her app made the exact same mistake as the T app. We should have all listened to the great George when he said, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me, you can't get fooled again. Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. Because we were fooled again. And in total, it only took 10 minutes for researchers to grab all this user data, including driver's license, from the T on her app. And surely, after all of this, nothing can go wrong again, again, again. Nah, I'm just messing with you. There doesn't seem to be any more leaks for either of the apps. However, both cases show why we shouldn't be handing over sensitive data to random apps. Though we might not even have an option anymore with crazy laws like the ones coming out of the UK requiring you to show your ID to sign up for websites. Even YouTube might implement a crazy feature where if it detects you're under the age of 18 using some form of AI, it's going to require you to submit an ID. At this point, we might be fighting a feudal fight. So my proposition is that we start a public S3 bucket and we all just willingly submit our IDs to it anyway. Now, if you want to contribute to this public S3 bucket, check the description down below and make sure to like and subscribe for more brilliant ideas. Thanks for watching.